Discover Music and I. Good evening and welcome to Discover Music and I. Uh, I'm Kendo and with me as always is Corky. Good evening, Corky. What's the crack? Good evening, Kendo. How are you? Have you managed I'm to very good. pull yourself together there and stop all that laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Good laughs> Such stuff. professionals as we are. Such professionals. So tonight, um, do you want to tell the folks what we have tonight then? Yes, tonight we have some great music lined up. So we do. Um, I've got a couple of tracks from Brand New Friend. Uh, one, I think it's pronounced W-O-H-N. I'm, I'm assuming it's one. Um, it, sounds, have... it sounds like John. Sorry, it sounds like John with a W. It's, it's exactly what it is. It's spelled <laughs> that way, anyway. Um, we also have our special guest, Andrew Patterson, will be joining us. So we'll be chatting a, a little bit about his music and playing some of his songs as well, obviously. And he's also got a, a recommendation to bring with him as well. Excellent. So we're going to kick off with Brand New Friend on a track called The Welcome Party. That's not, it's called The Karma Party. Can't read my own writing. <laughs> What a catchy tune that is. Good, good kickoff. Good I'm sitting dancing away there. Was, was going uh, it's just, you, you can't help yourself. You can't help yourself with that. That's, uh, there's three members of the Johnson family in that band from Castle Rock uh, with a couple of couple of friends and their brand new friend band. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Good one to start the show. I know as uh, we were chatting to Danny and Tom a couple of weeks back about, like, I always listen to bass. I know it's only a very slight bass, but I love there's a wee bass run just at the very end. That's all. Sounds great. Love it. Uh, you can hear it there, yeah. But I'm, not a bass, but, I'm, but I'm not a bass player. You're not a bass player. <laughs> right, following up from that, we're going to hear a song by Juan, which is a guy called John Weisner from Colerain. So we're staying, up, staying in the north coast direction, Excellent. and it's a song called Nightmare. Excellent. And here it comes. Mm. Nightmare 
Origin to that as Kendo. I'm really digging that. That's that, I mean, and that's my kind of our kind of music. Like it's good, yeah. Heavy driving guitars and I uh, even on his bio, like he just described his atmospheric guitars, alternative rock sounds like that. I would I would take you back almost to like Pearl Jam and Soundgarden. Oh. You, you know that kind of really really strong guitars on there, like you know. Yeah, definitely. Good track. Good good track. Happy Here's days. There stuff um so yes that's that's our our opening two tracks so it is for this evening um next up then we have andrew patterson is going to be joining us and we'll be chatting a, a bit about him will we bring him in <clears throat> yep if you will go ahead there i think he's sitting waiting in the green room there so uh our guest this evening andrew patterson andrew welcome thanks for joining us good to have you thank, with us. thank you so much for having me on thank you no yeah thanks for coming you're obviously you're here to chat about your music a little bit with us and um, we're going to play yeah. a few songs do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself first of all yeah i'm a singer songwriter from just outside belfast i've been playing open mics and coffee shop gigs all that sort of stuff for Perfect. well over 10 years but i've been taking it a bit more seriously probably the last five years i'd stuck an ep out in 2016 called pave the road and that was the first time i stuck out any of my own music just to get it out on spotify and to have people listen to it so since then i've just been building up really and um, building up a bit of a name around belfast and traveling down to dublin i lived in dublin for a year oh, and gigged around there for a little bit so just trying bouncing between belfast and, and dublin for the last few years and have stuck out another ep and a few more singles since then so yeah excellent. just excellent. just constantly playing very good excellent best way definitely i mean it's, that's the only way to do it yeah, that's yeah. What you, it's it's all or nothing, really, isn't it? You got yeah. to go for it, definitely. What nice. what do they call it? Play, playing your trade. Yes, and it's a long trade. You you definitely start <laughs> out. You start out knowing very very little, and we still know very very little, but hopefully a little bit more than we did at the beginning. More. Excellent. Very good. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to play then your first song of the evening. Uh, if you'd like to introduce it for us. Yes, this is a track of mine called Normal People. It's my most recent single. I put it out in February of this year. So I wrote it going back maybe two years ago after reading Sally Rooney's book, Normal People, that then last year during lockdown was the TV show that sort of became this phenomenon. And just reading it, there was something, for those of you who don't know, it's about a guy called Connell and a girl called Marianne and just how their lives intertwine over a number of years. And both of them are quite broken and both of them, seem to find something in the other person that, that makes them whole, but never at the right time. And they never really see how broken the other person is. They only see the brokenness in themselves. So that, I guess, was what made me write the song and just ran with that and um, wrote it down, recorded it last year in August and put it out there in February. So this is Normal People. Excellent. of beauty hanging on by a thread finding cracks in the fierce in the mirror that haunts you Mary and there's a darkness in these days that robs herself of the light I can tell fighting night I can stupid it was easy locking the fear inside Maybe there's no more people like us Maybe there's no more people like us Maybe there's no more people like normal people No more people, my love Tell you that I've been sleeping at night. Stubborn fragility painted on scars and the mark of you. It wounds us but keeps us alive. Maybe there's no more people like us. Maybe there's no more people like us. No more people like normal people No more people, my love Lock your door Come and die from your window cell Cause I wanna see you here for a while 
there's no more people like us. Maybe there's no more people like us. Maybe there's no more people like normal people. No more people, my love. Maybe there's no more people like us. Maybe there's no more people like us. Maybe there's no more people like normal people. No more people, my love. Normal people, my love. Great song there, Andrew. Class, thank you. Real, thank you. Really enjoyed that. Uh, thanks so much. Very, very catchy. Very um, sort of indie, alt rock, folk kind of. Would that be a fair yeah. assumption? Um, I think, yeah, I sort of characterize myself. It's always tricky because your music is something very unique to you, I think, but you always take influences from places. So I'd always talk about being sort of anthemic indie folk. Pretty good. So, Excellent. yeah. So, um, go, going on. Sorry, Corks, go ahead. After you, Kendo. No, I was just going to say, going on from putting that kind of, there's almost, you almost have to put yourself in a box whenever you're describing what type of music you play. But uh, we were going to, I was going to get on to asking sort of your influences then. Who would you say your influences were, even growing up to now kind of thing? Where, where you draw it from? I think going from growing up is is very vast. I, I grew up, my dad is big, always been big into music, but he was big into like that Nashville sort of sound, that Willie Nelson, Hank Williams, that sort of thing that maybe I draw on a little bit now, but definitely for years I didn't. For years I went down as a teenager, it was it was Green Day, it was ACDC, it was Led Zeppelin, it was yes. all that stuff that is is nowhere near my music now, but somewhere probably around the age of maybe, I don't know, Going into mid to late teenage years, I, I heard Damien Rice O oh, for the first time and realized yes. there were people out there that were writing songs that I'd been writing songs that were probably more like poems at that time. I played guitar, but I don't know if I was I was necessarily comfortable in playing them to other people. Definitely not until I was 16, 17, maybe anyway. And hearing that was probably the first time I realized there were actually people, and particularly in Ireland, picking up an acoustic guitar and and writing the sort of songs that I wanted to write. So Damien Rice was a big, a big jumping point for me. And then yeah. probably around that time, um, I was maybe, yeah, again, maybe 15, 16, first time I heard Foy Vance. And yeah. that just blew my mind. Just hearing Foy. Foy is such a huge influence here. And particularly back then, he was working with a loop pedal. He was doing all that sort of stuff way before way before he had the band and, and all of that sound that's amazing now, but he had a loop pedal and something about that just went, wow, this is one guy and he's doing yeah. that. And again, just as someone who wasn't in a band at the time, who was just writing songs by myself, it was hearing that and going, wow, those people are, are making songs, they're making music and they're doing it by themselves. So that really pushed me to do it. And probably through those years, I discovered Glenn Hansard so another guy who went up through the frames, I hadn't listened to the frames growing up. So when I discovered Glenn Hansard, I had the, the amazing chance to go back and listen to all of the frame stuff and all of that full band. And then from him, just see how he's able to explore folk, that sort of grunge rock, blues, everything. Yeah. So I think even now, as I sort of play a song like Normal People, that's quite anthemic, upbeat. Um, another single I put out before that was Little Darling. That's the complete opposite, really stripped back and Perfect. quiet and sparse. But seeing people like that, seeing people like Foy Vance, Glenn Hansard, who, who have just really made a career out of, out of being musicians who, who write music for the sake of writing music and not necessarily to fill into a genre as such and to be pigeonholed. So that's something that really inspired me from the start. Yeah, they're, yeah they're not, absolutely. They're not saying, here's the thing that everybody else is doing, so that's what I'm going to do. They're kind of, as you say, they're writing the music that they want to write. Yeah, there's um, something about it. I think it's, it's serving the song that when you pick up a guitar or an instrument and you're trying to write a song and not necessarily saying this is what I want it to sound like, even going to 
producer in the studio and having a song so often I've gone in with a song and it's changed into something completely different in mm-hmm. the studio, but that's where it needed to go. So yeah, that's, that's where it comes to life, I think in a way, and, and not just saying, this is what I sound like. This is what I'll always sound like. Yeah. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to see Foy Vance a couple of times and um, you can tell he's one of those musicians and he's making music on his own terms. He's not doing it, you know, to please people. He's doing it, you know, to produce good sound of music. Exactly. And t- yeah, and, and you can tell that when you see him perform as well. It's just like you can't help but just one admire admire the performance he's doing if he's a stand on his own or with, with the band, and two, the what he's actually you know the, the what what you're hearing. Do you know what I mean? I can't even get the words out. You yeah. just like you know what you're what you're hearing from him. He's, to tour the world with talent. to tour the world with like said Ed Sheeran, and then a couple of weeks later <laughs> go back to Bangor and play a show and and feed at these back bar to thirty people without yeah. any mics, without anything, after having played Wembley Stadium, <laughs> just yeah. shows you, I think, that he's just, it doesn't matter who's there, it could be thousands of people, it could be could be two or three, but he's always going to give you the same the same energy and the same yeah. power yeah. in those songs. That's, so that's always, that's a huge influence to me. Very good. And he's obviously, he's grounded enough in that where he he's not going to say, I'm not playing the five people, I've just done Wembley. Come exactly. I us. think that's what really... Anybody, if anyone, whether they're Irish, American, wherever they're from, the people that I listen to that I love are the people that are really grounded, the people yeah. that that maybe have had. I'm not necessarily going to say, oh, they, they had a hit single, so, so you don't listen to them anymore off the bandwagon, all that. But they're the people that are still quite authentic, quite grounded in, in who they are, that they don't yeah. get caught in the hype. And, and I yeah. think that's always always something that encourages me when I when I see guys like that. Yeah, Glenn Hansard's another great example of that too because, I mean, he's an Oscar winner. Exactly. You know? and, and, I mean, he's still just... I remember it was... And I love that film. I think that film's amazing, so we do. And I remember about a year or two after that, he was playing... Um, I can't remember if it was a solo show or a swell season. He was playing here in Derry, or uh-huh. uh, Love in Derry. And it was just one of my mates was at it and as well and he actually met Glenn Hansard walking up the street he was just out just walking around the town just casually having a day out and he's like they went over to speak to him Darren and his girlfriend at the time and, and a few of them went to speak to him and he said he was just just a normal guy he, he wasn't yeah. all like I'm Glenn Hansard you know he doesn't have an ego about himself or anything I think that. that's anyone who can can reach that level of fame without without an ego and yeah I've, I've been lucky to meet him a few times as well and mm-hmm. first time i met him was i went to see once the, the when i was living in dublin went to see it when it was done as a production a musical and i'd always joke with people like oh imagine if imagine if glenn was there the night you went to see it and before the curtain went down this guy had walked down a couple of rows in front of us and sat down and i texted my friend going Glenn Hansard's here. Glenn Hansard is in. <laughs> he is here, and it reached the it reached the interval, and I was still thinking, loving the show, but thinking Glenn Hansard is here. He's about three rows in front of me. This is incredible. But I came to the interval, and and I saw this this ginger guy stand up, and it wasn't him. And I didn't remember texting my friend going, "Oh man!" Like I got so caught in that, I thought, "Sorry, it wasn't him," and was gutted thought oh well just enjoy the rest of the show <laughs> and then the lights were ready to go down for the second half and this other ginger guy walks in and says turn back it is it's glenn hansard he's here <laughs> <laughs> um, then, that's brilliant I'd, I'd gone and just everybody else was sort of going on and the side door i think it was the getty theater in dublin and um i was going back getting the train and was walking out and he walked out the side door and there was nobody nobody there to wait for him nothing was just walked or... out and no nothing uh, I just remember going to chat to him and saying, amazing, huge fan, class, loved the show. And I won't do the accent because I'm shocking at the accents, but <laughs> he just was like, oh, we're going to Wheelands here. Are you coming? Very and good. Wheelands, the pub down in Dublin, he was like, there's a crowd of us going. We're just, are you coming? I was like, oh, I need to go and get my train. I need to go home. And walking back, I just remember going, what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and that was, it was gone. The chance was gone. But just even that level of just, right, you come to Wheelands, there's a crowd of us uh, going around. We're going, we'll have a session in Wheelands. And that just seems to be, from not knowing him at all, but that seems yeah. to be the type of guy he is. Uh, very much so. That's unreal. Uh, <laughs> That's unreal. Like, it's, you know, but this is one of those ones. Is it one of those ones you look back now and go, I wish it said I? Oh, you just go. Like, there would have been more trains. There was some way to get home that night. <laughs> oh, <I don't> know. <laughs> 
you don't think that way when it's the last train home normally. Oh, no, well, that's true. But um, but no, that's uh, I, I feel so sorry for you. I've missed that's that. Funny. That would have been incredible. I, I would have slept in the street for that. Oh, I texted my friend, <laughs> the same friend, and said what happened. They went, "What? What do you do? Why did you not? Why did you not go?" And just in that split second, I just you thought it was Dublin. It was a nightmare to pay a taxi home to where I was going. I was about thirty minutes out of the city, and I just thought I need this train. Right. And to this day, I don't really know why I chose that, but sure, we all make mistakes. If, if I had been your mate at that time and you text me saying it, I would have driven to Dublin. I would have driven from Derry to Dublin to go on that <laughs> night out and then be able to leave you home. You're a good friend. You're a better friend than they were. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do it for Kim. We'll... No. <laughs> no, but, I, knew, um, I knew you wouldn't. Well, you wouldn't. Um, but yeah, no, like, I've been going back to influences like that's Damien Rice. Um, and David Ford and Ryan Adams are oh. were my first three thoughts. Yeah, I don't, don't know if you're familiar with David Ford. He's David been... Ford, I saw David Ford. I've only seen him once. I know he's done Belfast so many times in the Empire, particularly. But um, the only time I've seen him, I saw him open for Duke Special back right. in about 2007. I want to say 2007 uh-huh. in the Ulster Hall, and again, just he came out, and I think he started with Go to Hell, and just Brilliant. that all the layers doing the back and vocals himself, just coming to full sold out Ulster Hall and just starting about eight layers of back and harmonies and the piano and the guitar and just his voice is, is incredible. Nice. And he, yeah, he's one no, of my, he, he's up there for me. He's one of my top three, four musicians. And I was similar, funnily enough, the first time I seen him was about 2009, 2010. And Duke Special actually opened for him. So it had oh, amazing. There you um, go. Um and then uh, during the show, Duke came out and played a, on a song or two as well, played a bit of piano and that as well. Um, but he's done the same thing. He started with State of the Union, which was my favorite song. And I at the time I didn't realize that he was in the looping because I don't think YouTube was really a big thing then at the time. And yeah, not a lot of places they see him performing that. And then he comes out and he plays the guitar, and then you just hear the three click, and I go, like, What's that noise? And then the, he stops, but the guitar's still going. I was like, oh, hang on a minute. What, uh, there's something about it. And uh, he said at the time that he said he would never be famous because his songs were either too long or had too many swear words, I think was what yeah, he said. So I like that. So he, he, but, wrote a, he wrote a book a few years ago um, that I read, and I'm not a reader. I can't do it. But I read his book because I was very interested in it. And there's a wee blurb in the back, and it says something along the lines of, for 10 years, people told me I was going to be the next, or not, it's uh it's there once was a time when people told me i would be the next big thing in music it took me 10 years to prove them all wrong something <laughs> along those lines where he was kind of it wasn't kind of anti-establishment in that kind of way but it was like sort of similar to you know as you're saying yourself and that you know this is the music i want to make i'm not going to yeah. listen to what this pr guy tells me and what these stylists tell me and all this kind of thing you know this is the music don't I believe want. the hype yeah yeah exactly and he's still going, so fair play yeah. to him. He's still, and anything I saw, like even just during lockdown, he seemed to be recording stuff and putting songs out in Bandcamp. And I think, I don't know if it was this year in lockdown, definitely through Bandcamp, he released like a whole album of those live looping stuff from a tour. And yeah. It just right. is amazing. Uh, the stuff he's coming out with is is fantastic. Every time, because I'm subscribed to his newsletter, and every time there's a new song on Bandcamp, I'm on it the next day. I'm listening oh, to it on repeat. So I'm, I've listened um, to a few. I need to listen to a bit more of them. Uh, some brilliant, brilliant musician as well. So it is. But, but yeah, we, we digress. We're, we're <laughs> going to do this often. We're going to go off topic a fair bit. So sorry. Sure. <laughs> we're all in our own homes. We'll yeah, just sit well, back and relax. It. That's true. That's it. But, um, but yeah, I suppose then sort of leading on from like that, you know, we talk about like gigs and things like that. Have there been any particularly good gigs or bad gigs that you've either been to of, of like sort of established musicians or any that you've performed yourself? For good gigs, definitely for me, the best gig, well, first, first gig I ever played was at a, a festival um, I went to as a teenager called Summer Madness in Belfast. So right. I would have gone that from it's maybe like 12 to 18 right. every summer and it was where i heard foy it was where i heard ian archer all these people um for the first time oh. just in the sort of evening I've seen, seen, ian, seen ian archer a number of times in the nerve oh. center is fantastic 
amazing i just remember hearing him at that festival summer madness for the first time and someone being like you know he wrote run by snow patrol and i i was ready at that time to hear to hear gary light but then i remember him coming out and not really getting it because i don't know what age i was I was 14 15 and not really getting his voice not really getting who he was but definitely something was planted in me and seeing him in like the black box and stuff a few years later it just wow amazing but i remember um yeah at that festival i got my first gig when i was was 16 there was a competition called avalon acoustic afternoons and the idea was you entered and you won an avalon guitar if you won and i went in with four other people i think where i was up against and all of them are are making music now but at the time i was 16 and, and they were all sort of in their in their 20s definitely leagues yeah. ahead of what I was doing, but that was such a popular slot at the festival that it was packed out. People queued around to get into it. There were about 500 people in this tent. Very and good. I was 16 and probably hadn't ever sung in front of anybody at that <laughs> stage except myself and went out and played played Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton and played my own song. And just remember thinking the whole way through it, that sort of out-of-body experience of don't get the words wrong, don't play the chords yeah, wrong and you'll be grand. Sure just keep going and it was the hottest tent right. anybody has ever seen so warm <laughs> and sweat pouring off everybody but just ending it and thinking that was class and probably somewhere no one even as a 16 year old the chances of even getting that many people in a room again yeah. is hard it's hard to do so that from the start was just an amazing because yeah. for the next number of years you're playing to to two or three people in a coffee shop or <laughs> 20 people in a coffee shop who don't want to hear you or a bar or wherever it is so to even just have had that experience under my belt and uh, i think that was a big moment of just knowing well you know what you can do this that let's go let's give us a shot so that was something excellent that was amazing yeah um, it was a sink or swim moment for you then oh man yeah but just something something special so that's going on a long time ago i yeah. i just turned 30 so that's yeah, 14, 15 years ago, but that was enough of a, of a catalyst to, to push me forward. Yeah. So that was definitely the best gig. Worst gig, worst gig for me, I, I don't know. Worst gig I've ever been to um, was possibly Guns N' Roses at Reading Festival. It right. was a really interesting <laughs> dynamic that sort of come out before the comeback, before Slash rejoined them, all that. Yeah. Um, and it just was act it was a festival slot so like you're obviously tight to time but nobody tells axel rose to stay tight to time yeah and he did about he did about eight costume changes in the middle of the set and there's in the middle of it they're doing like big solos so he can go off and do his costume and his voice is gone the shreds and um i just remember at the end of it they'd gone on so long that redding pulled the sound on them and pulled everything they just they cut the set and guns and roses yeah. threw the head up and <laughs> axel rose stormed out with a megaphone and they just used a kick drum <laughs> and a megaphone to try and sing paradise city and it was just oh it was just Horrendous. Awful. but I've, i saw them i saw them at slain a few years after and, and they redeemed themselves but um what what year was, was that really going back 2010 maybe 2009 2010 so uh, i think it was before <laughs> yeah, I, I seen them at quite a few years before that. Uh, two thousand and two, I seen them at Leeds Festival. Yeah, there were definitely a few years. I remember a download festival and all sorts of places. Him getting <clears throat> bottled off the stage and with his corn, yeah. what do you call those cornrows? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah all sorts right. of weird hairstyles. And um, I think even in Dublin, whether I don't know if it was the same tour, but the same sort of thing happened. They came on. And actually, yes, I know why it was. That was why there was such anger, and that's why it was so crap. Because they'd come on at a festival, something like two hours late, and yeah, you've been waiting since nine. They came on at eleven p.m. and then Red and let them play on a little bit, but once it hit half twelve or whatever, there's there's obviously a curfew, and I think that was the biggest thing. It was something. I don't know, the story went that there was a sign on his, he'd gone for a nap and there was a sign on his door saying, you must not disturb Mr. Rose. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Something, something real prima donna about it. And just he'd gone he, for his nap and they weren't waking up even if it was for his own set. Dear. But but even even back in their like heyday and the, what, the early 90s, I suppose, late 80s, early 90s, it, they were notorious like that. And it was like, it was kind of let slide because they were rock and roll stars taking drugs and drinking all night and all the rest of it and they kind of got a little, little bit they kind of 
you know, we're allowed to do this. And then they've just made yeah. kind of career off of it. Like, and it's there's ridiculous. something, there's something to be said because almost you, you don't go to the gig expecting them to turn up, but it is that the moment when you're standing in a crowd of people, and I think it happened in Dublin at some stage after it, where again, and he was two hours late and he waltzed out and the entire arena just turned against them and were, were winging things at them and uh, they stormed uh, off after two or three songs and that was that, that was the night over. But to turn your own audience against you uh, that much yeah. is, I don't even know how you do that. No, no. That, that takes an effort to do that so it does. I know, it's the effort of no effort at all, it seems yeah. to be, but he manages it. Uh, it's true. Yeah, people Thankfully, I haven't happen. had a gig like that. No, well, that's good. No. And touch wood, do, do, do not aspire to be like Axel Rose. <laughs> that's what you're all taught from a young age. You pick up a guitar, just don't be like Axel. That's fair enough. Don't be that guy. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, good stuff. Um, just uh, then, what we'll do is we'll play your second song. Uh, if again you would like to introduce it for us. Great. Um, this next song is a track of mine called A Wee Bit of Something. So it's it's about Belfast. I grew up just outside Belfast and I remember always going into the city with my dad for, for walks and, and looking up at those cranes at um, Samson and Goliath and just looking up and thinking, wow, those are massive. And as I get older, that when I started writing a song, it was that idea of, of Belfast and Northern Ireland and, and everything it's been through everything we've been through here but it keeps it keeps rolling on and, and people keep rolling on and hopefully and and looking looking with a little bit of hope we we believe i wrote it in a place where particularly politically everything just just was a bit of a disaster it was back in the days when, when Stormont wasn't wasn't open for business at all yes. and every day it just kept getting worse and i wrote this song with the chorus is a wee bit of something is better than nothing at all and it's mm -hmm. it's that thought of we can sit and moan and we can slabber and we can do what we like and there is a place for that but also that little bit of hope that we often have here and and believing that that things will get better sometimes is enough to carry us through as well obviously we need to act we need to do all that as well but having that little bit of hope and Sometimes maybe being told, oh, what are you doing for, for being so hopeful that things are this way, they're never going to change. But that line, a wee bit of something is better than nothing at all, is something, I guess, that I try to characterize through my music, that holding on to hope, even in the direst of circumstances. So this is a wee bit of something. Something I have, though it's small. 
something is better We bet something is better We bet something is better Nothing at all That was a gorgeous track. Oh, thanks so much. No Absolutely. Very, Thank very you. heartfelt. You can hear it in the lyrics there. Uh, it's, it, as you mentioned, it, like it's very poetic. So it is. It's very delicate. And then it builds into a bit of a crescendo. And it's kind of like goes up and then it's, it's kind of eases you back out again. Yeah, it was one of those songs I had it written. Um, I was working with a producer, Phil Dalton. And he had produced my first single, My Suitcase Heart. And it's probably a lot more that sort of indie pop quite catchy but we were in the studio trying to figure out a couple more tracks to do together and he just said play me play me whatever you got nice. and i sat and went through every demo on my phone and i think i went i've got something here it's just quite simple acoustic and i just played it as i played it just live just really simple stripped back acoustic chords and he just went wow let's do that and yeah. it started out, we called it, it didn't have, believe it or not, it didn't have a name. A wee bit of something seems seems quite obvious now when I look back, but for a long time it didn't have a name. And he said it sounded a bit like Bright Eyes, um, who again yeah. were probably yeah. quite a big influence on me. That sort of like, yeah, first day of my life, all that sort of really stripped back, nice acoustic. Uh, we just called it the Bright Eyes one for a long time. Right. <laughs> and we were putting songs down and he was like, we'll do this and we'll do this. Do the Bright Eyes one. And the plan was that the first track we did, Suitcase Heart, was piano, electric, bass, everything, drums. And the plan was we'll go in and do a real simple acoustic song. And it became that. that that's what I mean, that going into the studio without an agenda because we went in and then he played some Rhodes piano. And when he played that Rhodes at the beginning, we realized, well, actually, let's go back to the beginning. And I had a like a little intricate riff, that finger pick bit. And we went back and just said, well, what about at the beginning? If it just is the voice and the roads, just that almost organ. Um, and as it builds that just having, I can't remember what we have, whether it was a, a tom or a snare or what we used, but just that real simple, simple percussive sound. And we still didn't have it perfect. And he did a lot of work with Herb McGee, Arvel Party. And we got Herb, I sent it off to Herb and, Herb said, right, I'm going to mess it up a bit. I'm going to take that acoustic sound and, and add that sort of echoey reverb and all sorts of wee things at the beginning. And it just became something something entirely entirely different, but somehow still kept the heart of the song, I think. Uh, what do you mean? And, and with that vocal at the start, with the way it does have that different sound, that it, it, it sounds like it's, um, it, it, I don't know what to explain it. It sounds like it's playing out of a, like, a, like an old, radio in the corner yeah there's something it's that real it's it's like a distance to it and then it hits that second verse and just snaps you back out into something something different you could could actually imagine you could actually imagine that being played like on vinyl yeah you know it has that very much has that sort of from it it's that sort of dreamy sound and just i would end most of my gigs with that as just a song with me on the acoustic guitar and it seems to seems to be a song that connects with people whether they know my music or not but just i think as i said having grown up listening to like Safoy vance and glenn hansard and seeing what they do live and how they can capture an audience both of them foy with guiding like glenn with um yeah i can't remember what song he does but he, he sometimes would step into the crowd and grace beneath the pines oh, yes. um he does just completely strips back they can do the biggest loudest set and then completely unplug and step away from the mic and just yeah. sing and that's something i try and do with that song and, and it seems to work just it pulls people together in a song and i think sometimes sometimes that that's why we do music and, and that's why we miss audiences yeah. so much at the moment <laughs> yeah well, yeah it's like, as you're saying it's, it's almost <laughs> at, atmospheric there you know without being too much if that makes yeah. sense you know as you say you know it's yeah it's that's so lovely to listen to you. To Look, thank you so much. Like, Thanks. Really, really, really appreciate it. Really it. Is. 
It, it is, as you say, about Glenn Hansard. Um, I say, I remember the time you seen him, they done, I think it was Say It To Me Now. That's that's the one I was thinking of. I couldn't remember. And yeah. it was, as you say, like he like he unplugged his guitar and it was completely acoustic in every sense of the word. So there was nothing plugged in. Yeah. And he, no mic, as you say, in all tune. And he just sat on the edge of the stage and you're just sitting there and you're just all the focus. You're just 100% on what he's doing and what he's singing. And the whole room, the, I don't know, Millennium Forum holds maybe four or 500 people. I don't know. And everybody was silent. Yeah, everybody was just listening to it, and it's 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 a moment. There's something about it. You can you can manufacture it a bit, but there's something about it that's just when you do it right, that you can have the loudest gig mm. of people off their head, and the moment you unplug and and walk away from the mic, people go, "What's he's doing? Something? He's doing right. something?" And it's risky because you you're hanging on a tightrope because it goes one way or another in that moment that either you walk away and, and they keep talking and you've completely lost them or they catch you and even the person at the back who hasn't listened all night and has just been talking about EastEnders yeah. suddenly is with you yeah. and there's something about that that I think that's what I learned I did a bit of busking um, in Dublin and, and I've done a wee bit in Belfast as well yeah. and there's something about about the power of that the power of singing the power of playing without without any form of amplification that that can capture people i think so in a gig when that happens and especially in the middle of a gig that all sorts of other things have been happening it can just in that moment can really capture the attention and i think it, it's something that's yeah, definitely. amazing when it's done right absolutely yeah and just uh, as, as a little side on that um like instrumentation it's, it's something i'm always interested in is um oh, you mentioned there your, your producer uh I can't remember his name. Phil Dalton was yeah, it? Phil, yeah, Phil Dalton. Um, he played with Master and Dog. Yes, I know who you mean now. Um, he played the, the Rhodes yeah. organ on that. Would you just do guitars? Do you do any other instrumentation? I think as I've, as I've grown a bit as an artist, as a musician and myself, I've, I've experimented a little bit more. My Definitely guitar is, is where I'm most comfortable, but particularly in sort of building a home studio of sorts here particularly over lockdown i've i've got a, a fender strat and a couple of delay pedals and different things to try and experiment a bit more with those sounds um for banjo mandolin all those sort of folk yeah. instruments yeah. and when i go into the studio then i try and use them whether it's it's just that little extra top end high level notes yeah. or something and, and there's people out there who'll be able to play them much better than me but just to bring bring that little bit of different aspects of the song definitely when i started out i was going with an acoustic guitar and my voice yeah. and the first ep i did that was pretty much all it was and i i did end up doing all the parts and playing the electric and playing all that but not necessarily very well and that's what was really radical when i met phil um i got to know phil and, and we talked about recording something and i went with my suitcase heart as a track was quite a catchy in the folk sort of tune but it was acoustic guitar and that was it. And he played something on piano that just made me stop and go, wow, he's, a, he's an amazing pianist. Yeah. And it was one of those moments when you bring a song and it's completely changed before your eyes. And I just sat and I remember going, wow, what was that? And he was like, oh, I was just warming up. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> that was him just, he was like, I don't know. But I, hate people like that. That was, I know exactly. <laughs> it's gone back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Phil's Phil's a lovely guy. Edit, edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't want me to say he's a lovely guy. He likes Phil thrives and thrives and and being the moody the moody guy. But right. he's a lovely guy, really good guy. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was working with him was amazing. It taught me an awful lot about the studio. It taught me an awful lot about how to build a song beyond yeah. doing it. Maybe how you do it live and and how you build it up is is very different um yeah. and that's probably where i learned a little bit more about dynamics in the studio and not just cramming it all in trying to be sparse in places and, and building it but working with phil and again i worked with him for a few tracks and hopefully again um, in the future but the last track we did was a song called upon the shore and i went in with him again with an acoustic guitar but while he was recording and getting mics ready i sat at an old 
piano and and played out a little bit of a melody and he heard it through the mic and went what was that play that again we'll record it very good and then he hummed the harmony and told me figure that bit out we figured that and added the harmony and the keys and then we did a bit of banjo and then he set up some delays and reverbs and just went go in and play and it came up with that real sonic spacey sound that's on that track and yeah that was something that probably without without a producer like that yeah would have been a very different song so having people who know what they're doing definitely having session musicians is something but having a producer who's who's talented and well it's certainly one of those things that he can extract those extra bits out of you that you didn't know you had in you yeah Uh, and i think i think you just you can get very caught in and who you are and what your songs sound like it it's very much the power of collaborating with somebody is is something that i definitely don't take for granted at the moment that's yeah. whether it's writing a song with someone or or having someone add bits to your song that you never knew were there i think it's good to go in with a vision and a strong vision of saying this is what i want it to be and this is definitely what i don't want it to be but equally not ever going in with your hands so tight to the reins that that you're afraid to let go of it slightly i think yeah. yeah when you release it you have to let go of it anyway when you put a track out there so in the studio giving someone else a little bit of control sometimes at least i find has been really beneficial for for the ultimate end track yeah it definitely cool. does and i mean a lot of our guests we've had on <coughs> pretty much said the same thing you know it's it is good to have somebody on the outside and you know that your knowledge is you know and your sort of uh sort of spectrum of what you know and what you like is maybe this bit and then he's got this wee tiny bit over here that's a wee bit yeah. different but a wee bit the same and that just something like that could change as, as you said you know you were just fooling around and he stopped you and said hang on let's go back yeah and, and then that, that became a song from that so that might have been something you might have just had like a wee riff and you might have never done anything you might yeah. have written a song out of it might have been as you say completely different sounding as well but he's kind of Got you on the hook and says, "No, come back. Let's do that." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's somebody else there actually seeing the value of something that you were going to throw away. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good stuff. Uh, but no, that's great. So does um, I, I, that song's fantastic. I, Mark, that, thank you. That that song was well. I mean, obviously, the two of us and a few other ones, but that was the one that when I was listening to it earlier, it really kind of was like, "Oh, hang ah, amazing." That. You know, um, and that's you. why I was late in getting my dinner this evening. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, that's the first time that's been said, but it's I'll probably, take the last, it. the, probably the last time you'll ever hear someone as stupid as that as well. Your imagine. song was so good, I didn't eat my dinner. <laughs> I see that in the front page of the Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> I mean, Every, everybody's din- dinner's late because they're listening to music. Um, <laughs> but no, it's a, I say a great song. Absolutely. Doc, thank you so much. No, Thanks. Um, what we'll do then is we'll go on we'll, we'll play your recommended song then um, you've brought another track from somebody uh, else that you recommend is it somebody you know or, or somebody you've worked with maybe is it? yeah it's um, a guy called Ben Cutler I met Ben years ago um, playing Cafe Nero sessions um, his mm-hmm. dad is Lee Cutler he is the manager of Fireside Shopping Centre and has been amazing at just supporting young artists in particular um, Fireside has really been amazing through things like Belfast, Nashville, through Dalriada Festival, all these sorts of Hollywood Harmony, all these festivals over the last few years, but has been really good at, at developing young artists. And Excellent. I got in just through a friend, um, a guy called Michael James, who was gigging just regularly in this Cafe Nero on a Friday night and had said he was running on it and had said, do you want to come down and do a few songs? And I met Ben through there because his dad was running the night. And Ben at the time was maybe 14, like really young. Yeah. But and is now, I think he's in his last year at, at school, so he's 17, 18, and is incredible. His voice for for being so young is, is incredible. And he's really finding himself as an artist and just really, really hugely talented, a brilliant live presence guitar player voice and really I think we'll we'll go places for for being such a young guy has, has a vast future ahead of him so yeah that's sorry I, I'm like, uh, I'm smiling when you're saying this because I've listened to this song a few times and I would never have said that was a 17 18 year old singing that he's song incredible <laughs> just a voice that a really old voice but wow what what a voice 
we'll, we'll do yeah, if, you, if you could just introduce the title of the song as well I need to remember what it's called. Friday, <laughs> Friday, 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 there we go. On take two. When every day feels the same. Can't escape the dark or the rain When the week seems to never end And Friday feels like Monday over again And but I know oh, oh, that it won't be long There'll be brighter days to come and you can't change what's been done You gotta keep on pushing on mm -hmm. There'll be brighter days to come Brighter days to come When all the path we seem to fade I don't even recognize Which way's forward, which way's back I'm tired of chasing something I can't have and But I know, oh, oh, that it won't be long But there'll be bright days to come And you can't change what's been done You gotta keep on pushing on Bright days to come, bright days to come. But when the ground beneath your feet feels like it's falling free, and the further you climb, the harder you fall. But you can't turn back when the fire starts to die. You gotta keep it alive, cause it's the only thing that'll guide you. The darkest of the night But I know oh, that it won't be long But there'll be bright Days to come, and you can't change what's been done. You gotta keep on pushing on. Mm -hmm. There'll be bright days to come. Kendall, I think Andrew has lied this. I don't believe a that that sounds like a 17 year old kid, and wow. lyrically, I don't think a 17 year old kid has written that. It's it's nah it's, definitely, it's, definitely not <laughs> forty five year old man. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> considering like we we have played a number of uh, let's call them younger artists um, throughout this uh, podcast so far, and don't get me wrong, not all of them you could say that they were the age they were, um, but that's. You know, he's, that definitely doesn't. That definitely doesn't. Oh, sense. he's just sensational, and that's quite stripped back. That um, he worked with a guy, Matt MacGyver, that I've done a bit of production with in the past, and Matt's amazing. That sort of Americana, Simon Garfunkel, all that folky sound. But check out Ben's other stuff. It's almost he, he loves Oasis and um, Richard Ashcroft and all that sort of old school, old school like nineties. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, and um, just Ken, amazing, Kendall's, amazing talent. Kendall's already thinking of when can we get him on? If he's oh. the Oasis and Richard Ashcroft and the Verve and all that. That's... 
just don't ask him about the Beatles. He's not a big Beatles fan. <laughs> controversy. Oh, really? man. Oh, controversy. We'll ask, him, we'll ask him everything about the Beatles. That's the biggest wind up you can get him for. Oh, would, really? Right. Would he, uh, he wouldn't appreciate then if I said the Beatles were better than the Rolling Stones, which to be honest, I don't agree with. I prefer the Rolling Stones. I don't, I don't know where he stands on the Rolling Stones, but if you tell him the Beatles are better than Oasis, he won't be happy. I'll go with that then. <laughs> we just tell him Oasis ripped off the Beatles. He's not. He doesn't enjoy that. I'm just a cover band. Exactly. Same haircut and all. <laughs> but oh. no, amazing. Just his other stuff. He had a track out there, Castaway, and a lot of other stuff that is really building that big band sound as well. And just, yeah, we'll, we'll be seriously going places, that guy. Yeah, you can just tell like the, uh, the, the layers, the textures and everything in that. That's, yeah, that's, that's unreal. Yeah. It's great, that, as you say, like about his followers, really good and trying to promote younger people like that too. And I suppose that's kind of part of why we're here. You know, like people like that, we want to kind of try and give them a bit of a push too. If, if maybe lesser people know about them, you know, it's yeah, because okay, it's an amazing thing to be able to do. Because there's such there is such a wealth of talent. I think there's always one or two acts in in a city or wherever you are that that maybe seem to people know about. But when you dive beneath the surface, that pre-COVID, every night of the week, and, and Bangor and Belfast and Derry, wherever you are, there was there was something happening, or an open yeah. mic, or a battle of the bands, or something where yeah. amazing stuff was happening, and it didn't have to be going to the Ulster Hall or the Odyssey. You're saying like beneath the surfaces, like uh, whenever we started doing this, and obviously Corky's doing all the editing side of things, so I was kind of looking at all the music that's out there and it blows your mind i'm sure I'm you know sure. you know spotify Bandcamp, and stuff like that and i'm just every like how you're trying to actually do your day job and i'm paying you messages going listen to these listen to these listen to these okay. listen to these <laughs> it's just like going this is classes classes you know and i was just going like all real absolutely yeah. unreal like what's there um so that's why like we consider it a privilege to get people like yourself on to talk about it and spend a bit of time and like you've brought somebody else to us as well. So not alone have we got your music to listen to, we've got yeah. somebody else's now as well. So that's you know, passing you know, passing the torch to somebody else. That's that's what we want to be doing. Amazing. Yes, you're doing a good job. Thanks for so, but yeah, it's yeah, it's unreal what's what's out there. And it's just as I say, it's a shame that this is obviously where this all came about was we can't go to gigs, we can't see, you know, we're not getting a chance to see people performing and, and doing their thing so this is obviously you have to use what what's available and this is yeah. this is what it is for now you know yeah and i think people have made the most of it i mean a year ago we were all thrown into this and you just used what you had you used your phone you used whatever setup and i think a lot of people have done as i said i i sort of had a garage that we'd done up as a bit of a studio just for records and all that sort of stuff but i kept my music in it but being able to go out and actually use it now as a bit of a as a studio for stuff like this is something that was a blessing that wouldn't have happened otherwise. But yeah, really, you miss you miss as good as the rest is. You miss you miss being out playing. Yeah, yeah. So then, I would say that something like COVID is obviously very beneficial for people like yourself that you have this space and you think you know. And there's such a creative, um, like sort of creative energy in that, right? I have loads of free time because I can't go on gig. So, right, I don't need to practice yeah. them. Whenever I do gig, I'll practice them again. I'll take six weeks and I'll perfect them again. But I can just go and write and have all this yeah. space, both obviously physically, but also sort of mentally as well, that you don't need to worry about these other songs. They're done. Don't need to practice them. What can I do next? And obviously, yeah. say with the space you have in your garage, you're saying you've sort of built a bit of a studio in there now. And a lot of people are probably doing the same as well buy bits of equipment or things online, get them shipped and yeah. all that kind of stuff, you know. And it's great. It's, it's horrible because we're all in lockdown, but it's great too. It gives you that sort of freedom to be as creative as you, as you want to be as well. Yeah, you got to just try and make, we're all here, we're all in it, so we've got to try and, and make the most of it. That's it, absolutely. So have you uh, have you any pending releases coming up or anything in, in, on the pipeline that you're hoping to have out soon or anything like that i'm doing a bit of work and um, the arts council have been amazing through this the arts council were able to fund normal people and to allow me to maybe push it a little further than i had done i'm an independent artist so i'm not relying on the back end of a label everything that i make essentially is coming from gigs or coming from 
royalties earned from from music and radio play and all that sort of stuff as a musician. So COVID, COVID has most people just put a giant full stop on that for a while. So the Arts Council has been incredible in supporting people across, not just music, across everything. And the last track, Normal People, was funded by the Arts Council through a grant they'd put out. um, And so some of that is still going towards some of the grant they've provided is, is going to a new single that's hopefully coming out um, towards the end of May, start of June, Excellent. that I'm excited about. I'm doing a bit of work, doing some photo work for it in the next week and doing a little bit of work here in my own studio, just finishing up vocals and, and different edits and things and getting that done remotely with the producer. So hopefully Excellent. that will be coming out in the coming month. So I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. Yeah, be sure, be sure and let us know when it is. Yeah, we'll yeah, uh, of course. We'll make sure and get that mentioned in some of the in the future apps and stuff Brilliant. like that. Um that's what we've been doing with all our all our guests is just if you have something, just ping us a message, let us know Class. what and when and, and even if you're whatever it is, whether it's a Facebook live or a, or a single, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get, you, get you a shout. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's been been good to good to chat and yeah. just good to chill out and have a bit of crack. That's that's exactly what we want. Yeah, I uh, appreciate you taking the time. Um, we're grateful for everybody giving up a bit of time just to come and have a chat because it's like nobody knows us. They don't really know much about what we're doing, but that's why whenever we get you on, we sort of try and uh, open your mind a little bit to what we're trying to get to. So everybody, as I say, has been, it has, Courtney, been very overwhelming with what, what feedback and, and everything from people that have been on or people that have seen the little bits that we have done. Um, you know, it's all... It's all very, very positive. Amazing. But yeah, as I say, thanks again. It's been an absolute pleasure having Brilliant. you. Brilliant. No, thanks for having me. No worries. Yeah, appreciate it. We'll catch up with you all soon. The no worries. Indeed, all the best. All the best with future music. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Another great guy, Kendall. Another yeah, great indeed. guy. Another one. Another one, indeed. Um, it makes life so much easier whenever you've got somebody that's easy to talk to and put it back and forth and interesting to listen to their point of view like even um chatting about his songs and everything else is yeah. it, you know not everybody talks about their songs in, in great detail they sort of go ah oh, there's a song that's about this uh-huh. but you know just you can even tell by the lyric content in the songs you know there's there's attention to detail in it and, and everything else you know so cool right so we've had three great songs there uh last one was ben cutler and brighter days so um, coming up, we've got Buffalo Bay and Brand New Start. And here it comes.
Great song, Kendo. Uh, uh, l- loving that. It just reminds me of like you know, like some of those American teen comedies of somebody having a band at a, at a house party. It's yeah, just one of them. I don't know why. It's something. There's just something really cool about it. Um, I was just saying to you, it's like I can't put my finger on it. Here it reminds me on, but yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to listening to more of those. So it's uh, Buffalo Bay, brand new start. I, I thought it was very like <clears throat> train, maybe not specifically like them but it's it's got that same kind of vibe that kind of beat kind of as you mm. say kind of a bit of a party vibe to it uh great song great song mm. looking forward to hearing more of that happy days haven't said that in a while oh, that's good editing <laughs> hi sorry slow slow in the uptake here uh so kendall what have we got next week Next week, we have music from Hex Hugh, Laps, uh, Paper Tigers, Neon Apathy. We also have special guest, Danny Houston, a.k.a. H.C. Bailey. Excellent. Looking forward to that. Uh, a wee bit of a, a curveball, maybe, with, with Danny next week? So on different. Yes. Offering a wee bit of diversity to the music that uh, we're providing here. So we're trying to keep it, well, we'll trying not, to we'll keep not, it open. We'll not tell the listeners what it is. They may have figured it out already. But we'll not tell them. It'll be a surprise. Uh, they, if they know, if they know Danny Hood, then they'll know what they know what they expect. <laughs> True. And we have a special announcement. And we might have a special announcement. Um, excellent. No, excellent. Good, good stuff. Looking forward to that. Um, just a reminder to everybody as well that you can find all the social media links in the description below, as usual, for all the artists we featured tonight. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's us wrapped up, Kendo. What are we closing out with? Tonight we are closing out with a song from Riley Holland and this is called Someone Else's Clothes. Excellent. Looking forward to it. And here it comes. Our road doesn't change a thing Yeah, we're still on and off and back and forth like we do You sit in summer we be okay, but we need a break, need a break, need a break. It's been a year now, not three months. Don't recognize me, I changed so much. We go get coffee so you can talk it out. And you say, Take me back, but I can't. I'm so moved on, tripping on someone else's clothes. I'm over the bathroom. You said, I heard you back. Someone else is clothes on the way to the bathroom
shirt And it comes on and off and on and off as we do He says he loves me Nothing's ever felt this good Loving more every day, every day, every day It's been a year now, not three months Don't recognize me, I've changed so much We go get coffee so you can talk it out And you say Take me back, but I can't I'm so moved on Tripping on someone else's clothes on the way to the bathroom I said I heard you bad, I know that But it don't mean a thing Tripping on someone else's clothes Thanks for tuning in to our podcast, Discover Music and I. If you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, ding the bell and comment and tell all your friends. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>